Hi guys, Tech James here. In this video, we're just going to be unboxing and taking a quick look at the Sony Xperia Play R800i. So this right here is the black model. It is an unlocked version and it's the one gigabyte internal storage one. And this was actually made in 2011. This isn't something that's new. It's basically Sony's PSP Go phone. It's pretty cool. It runs PS1 games, emulators, um, tons of like different games which Sony made for it. It can't actually play PSP games, but as you can see, it's pretty much designed like the PSP Go. So we're just going to be unboxing it. I'll show you guys what's on here I actually wanted to buy one of these I've been trying to get one of these maybe for like a year now but I wanted to get one with a box that was in really good condition with all of the accessories and stuff not too bothered about the condition of the phone I can always like restore it because the parts are quite cheap on eBay I managed to pick this thing up I think it was about um, 30 pounds maybe like four pounds postage so not too bad altogether considering it's in the original packaging and everything like that so let's just go ahead and unbox this thing right now it also does have micro sd card support which is actually pretty cool for something and um, that was made in 2011 so here is the box um pretty nice design as you can see here is like the phone it tells you some information down here so it's got a four inch screen um 3g five megapixel camera which obviously today's standards isn't really that good um it has like a game controller icon i guess that means this right here um, so also on the side it would have the IME stuff, I've just covered this up just with a bit of paper um, just in case you don't really want to give too much away and here is the other side so Xperia Play, PlayStation Certified. Now this is running um, Android, I'm not too sure what version of Android this one is running, um, it's going to be quite old, maybe like Android 2.3.5, 2.3.4, something like that, um, maybe I'll have to update it. Um, as you can see, Sony Experience of Play on the side. Got the Sony Ericsson logo up there. Um, so yeah, let's just go and unbox this thing right now. So here it is. The box just slides out like this. Kind of weird, like cloud water design. Not too sure. And it should just open like this. So as you can see, here is the phone right here. Now this exact phone isn't in the best condition. I'll give you guys a close up of it now. I have actually looked at this. Um, there is actually like a slight mark there on the screen. What I might do is actually like um, replace the screen and stuff like that. I don't think it's too hard. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll make a video on that. Maybe I'll try and like buy some extra parts off eBay or something. This is what the back of the phone looks like. As you can see, the Xperia logo has actually kind of worn off a bit, but it's not like, I can replace the back very easily. I can get a replacement back for like $5 or something like that. Um, here are the L and R buttons. They actually look in pretty good condition. And uh, we've got a volume button right here, like the volume rocker. Um, the Chrome doesn't seem to be scratched or anything like that, which is good. So obviously you can slide the phone out. Here is the controller. There is actually a few scuffs on the controller right there, but I should be able to kind of clean this up a bit, just make it look a bit nicer. So as you can see, that is how it looks like the PSP Go. Pretty cool. The sliding mechanism still works perfectly fine. Doesn't get like jammed or anything like that. So I think what we're going to do first is take a look at some of the other stuff we have in the box. There is a front compartment here. I'm not actually sure which is in here, so I'm just going to tip it out. It looks like I've got a battery, instructions, random stuff. There's a cloth in there as well. And one more thing, what is this? Oh, I think they're like, um, you put them on the end of headphones. So we've got um, instructions manual, obviously. Never really bother looking at these, but you just keep them because it will add to the value um, of this thing one day. And then here is the Sony Ericsson battery. We will need to take this out. I could feel the phone, it was pretty light, so it definitely doesn't have a battery in already. So we will be putting this in. Uh, we've got a cloth. Is it actually, it does have a name on it. I don't know if this actually came with it or not. And then here is just a um, screen protector, which I never really like using. So let's use the battery. We'll put that in, in a minute. Let's just see what else um, we have in here. So, oh, this thing lifts out. It looks like we've got a load of stuff in there. So this is like a, um, like you use your phone to charge it in the car, I guess. This is the official one. Got the Sony Ericsson logo on there. We have got some headphones. They're official as well. They do say 
Sony Ericsson on them. The USB adapter um, into the wall. And we've also got the charging cable which comes with it, so that's good. And what is this, another charging cable? No, this looks like a spare one, so. Oh, maybe this didn't actually come with it. I think this is the official one. So that's good, the official one is still sealed. And that is literally it. So let's just move some of this stuff out of the way. And um, we'll put the battery in the phone and let's see um, if it boots up. Okay, so let's put the battery in, see if the phone turns on. Um, with the actual back on this phone, it should unclip fairly easily. I believe there is actually a way to get in. I think it's just here. You can actually just start to take the back off. Okay, there you go. Now once the back is off, this is where the, um, what's it called, SIM card would go. And then this is where our memory card would go. So it looks like we've got a, oh, we've got a memory card in here. Which one is this? Micro SD. It's a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. So that is pretty cool. I guess this has some stuff on already. Um, this has been set up before, I know that. Um, so let's just put this back in. Let's also put the battery in. I don't actually have a SIM card that would work, um, I'm pretty sure, so we're just going to have to use it without one. It uses like the really old fashioned ones. Let's just click the back on. Okay, now let's power this thing on. So here is the power button. Let's just hold it for a few seconds. And then it should power on and we should actually get the boot screen. There you go, Sony Ericsson. Old phones always used to have that kind of like laggy boot screen. I always think thought that was kind of weird. Okay, so it looks like it's just powering on right now. Um, as I said, this has been set up before. And um, yeah, let's just go on to it. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's actually got like the PSP theme on here right now. If you look at the background, um, we can swipe. So it's got music, market, browser. Um, we've got the... I believe that should be the date, but it's kind of messed up right now. Um, we've also got Crash Bandicoot. This does play PlayStation 1 games. A few in, uh, like quick settings here. You can enable like Bluetooth and stuff. So down here we've got media, messaging, contacts, phone. If we tap this button, we can see all the apps installed. So let's just scroll through um, everything on here right now. As you can see, this is the first page. Nothing really interesting. Obviously, we've got the market. This is connected to my Wi-Fi, but most of the stuff I try and like open doesn't work. Uh, this is actually asking me my Google account, so I'll go back on that one. Facebook, um, there's Crash Bandicoot. I will show you some gameplay in a minute. Um, let's just see if we've got anything else, which is kind of interesting. There's a few random stuff on here. Also a Game Boy Color emulator, can check that out quickly. And a Nintendo 64 emulator I tried. Um, it just keeps on crashing and stuff like that like this so I think I'm gonna have to get a more modern Android version maybe like a custom ROM or something and then try it again here we've got BBC iPlayer um, so yeah pretty much I think these are all the default apps they do actually come with Crash Bandicoot on default which is pretty cool and you can also get other PlayStation 1 games using this Crash Bandicoot game you can sort of like create your own games for it it's pretty cool um, you will need a PC for that maybe I will make a video but I think what we're going to do, there doesn't seem to be really anything that interesting. What I'm going to do is actually go to the settings. If you just tap this button right here, um, you can go to settings. Um, let's go to about phone. Um, let me find it on here. Oh, here you go. Android version. So Android version is 2.3.4. That is a very old Android version. Um, yeah, no wonder why nothing really works, I guess. So I think what we're going to do is test out some Crash Bandicoot gameplay. Um, or we could change the wallpaper, I guess. Let's go into wallpapers, live wallpapers. So we've got classic PSP theme. Um, oh, original. Oh, so there's different ones. What does classic look like? Oh, that was the one we had before. Okay, let's change it then. Live wallpapers. Let's put on the water theme. I don't know what this is. Oh, is it like a theme where you tap or something and it does the water? Oh yeah, that's pretty cool actually. Quite nice custom theme. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to launch up Crash Bandicoot PlayStation 1 game using the PlayStation Pocket. So if we just tap on it, it should load up. 
Okay, so it's saying your progress is saved. So what you can do from here, just rotate the phone. You can actually just bring out the keyboard just like that. And let's just go on continue. So let me just turn up the volume a bit. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Now the volume keys on this are actually a bit weird because they're sort of like the wrong way around, if that makes sense, when you would be playing the game. So if you'd go to like turn it the way you think you'd turn it up, it would actually be turning it down, which is really strange. But let's just try some Crash Bandicoot gameplay real quick. Um, start game. It's quite awkward to play like this, but I try and play it. Um, Sanity Beach, let's just do some quick gameplay so I can show you guys. Um, this does actually run really well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, if you guys want to get one of these, um, I would probably recommend getting one. I'd say don't spend above £60. Quite a lot of them on eBay, like um, around like £50, £60. Definitely don't spend that on one. It's not really worth it. I wouldn't spend more than like probably like 30 quid that's pretty much why I paid for this so yeah it's not too bad something nice to add to the collection anyway um, if you're into like collecting these sort of things like I am I just sort of like hold them and um, in a few years time I would say this is definitely going to be more expensive and um, which is pretty cool so yeah there aren't they aren't too common aren't really many of them around anymore which is pretty nice so yeah Crash Bandicoot holds up pretty well I could definitely play it I do actually want to test out Tekken as well so maybe I'll find out how I can get more games on this and um, yeah make a video on that but yeah Crash Bandicoot perfectly playable um, it's just I'm kind of playing at like an awkward angle right now but yeah it's um, definitely um, worth playing So I'm pretty sure we can press this button and we've got some settings, quit, media volume, controller settings, manual, screen mode. Oh, so does it have like the original screen on here? Oh, it does. That's cool. So this is probably like the original screen size you'd get on your PS1. I always prefer the zoomed ones anyway. I don't really mind if it stretches it out too much. I think it just looks better in full screen. So what we're going to do, press button, go up to quit, press X. Do you want to save? Um, wherever I guess and yeah you can actually use the phone on its side as well and scroll through the apps using the controller which is pretty cool let's test out the Game Boy Color emulator just quickly if I go and select ROM um, Pokemon Silver I'll just show you guys that this works as well um, and you can use the controller I just turned down the volume because I know Pokemon um, Pokemon games do actually have copyrighted sounds but yeah, Game Boy Color, PS1, I'm going to try and get some other emulators working. It's just the Android version is so low right now, um, I couldn't actually install anything. When I tried to update it on the phone, it asked me to put in a SIM card. Obviously, I don't have one. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to find some way to flash a ROM onto this thing. So yeah, that is Pokemon Silver, I guess, which is also cool. You can actually press the button down here and it will bring up the menu on the actual emulator itself, um, which is actually really cool. So let's just close out of this one and we can turn the phone back around, put that away. So yeah, I actually quite like this thing. It's pretty cool. What I'll do right now is just show you a comparison between this and the PSP Go. So here is the R800i and the PSP Go together and they actually look they're actually really really similar in size actually I was kind of surprised um, on how similar they are obviously you can just do that with them as well the PSP Go is actually a bit bigger I think maybe the phone is a little thicker actually if you just take a look at that but yeah they're actually really really similar in size which is actually pretty cool obviously this is touch screen and the PSP Go isn't and they both have pretty similar screens though um, so yeah maybe I'll make more of a comparison video but I just wanted to show you quickly what it is like compared and they're actually um, very similar devices so if you guys are wondering like the main two kind of like game apps for the phone, it's the PlayStation Pocket right here. This will display all of your PlayStation 1 um, ISOs and then if you just back out, um, the other one is actually the Xperia Play app, which is this one right here. This will show kind of all your downloaded Xperia Play games. If I try and add more games, it just kind of like gives me an error, which is kind of annoying, but it does actually have a couple on here. Um, if I just go on Xperia Play games. So we've got my Nintendo 64 emulator, and we've got Start Battle on, I don't know what that is, um, Sims 3 is on here, FIFA 10, and Bruce Lee Dragon Warrior. I'm pretty sure some of these are actually installed, so 
maybe this one isn't, no this one isn't, so this one needs to actually instill, maybe I'll let this instill and just see what this does. So here we are on the Bruce Lee Dragon Warrior, never even heard of this game before, so let's just see um, what this is real quick. It's one of those Xperia Play games, I don't know if it was free or they paid for it, um, but actually the graphics do actually look pretty cool, this is quite cool. I didn't actually, I thought it was going to be like a 2D thing, I wasn't expecting this. Oh, so it's like um, Tekken, that's actually quite cool. Never heard of this before though. Oh, I'm probably going to get wrecked by this guy. Oh well. Yeah, so I just got wrecked. But yeah, um, this game actually looks pretty good, maybe I'll test it out a bit more. But let's just exit out to the main menu for now. Um, let me just show you internet browsing real quick. Um, if I go and open up the browser, so I can just go to google.com and um, I can actually go to the search bar. I wouldn't recommend using like the keyboard for this or the um, controller for this. It's much easier just to type in stuff. So if I just type in my YouTube channel right now and just search for it. Let's see, does it let me actually go onto YouTube? Yeah, so internet browsing on this isn't actually too slow, which is actually kind of interesting. Um, if I compare this, maybe to like one of my iPhones, like iPhone 5C, um, one of my older iPhones, it's actually really, really, it's actually faster. And does it let me play my video as well? Oh, it does, that's actually quite impressive and it's already loaded quite a bit. Okay, so this device is actually a lot better than I expected, which is actually quite nice. So I definitely will make some more videos of this, um, like custom ROMs, um, maybe like some emulators and stuff. And I'll try and get this thing um, actually looking pretty cool. So that is pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.